The House of Lords made 10 amendments to the Rwanda bill, and yesterday the House of Commons voted those down, which means that the Rwanda bill can now go back to the Lords pretty well as it was originally formed, and the Lords will have a choice. They can put forward their amendments again, in which case the bill will return to the House of Commons probably after the Easter recess, and there will be more ping-pong, or the Lords can shrug and pass it through for royal assent. I think, given the depth of feeling, that the likelihood is that this will go backwards and forwards for a little while now, and the possibility of there being a flight to Rwanda by the summer recess, I think, is very unlikely. I think there might be a flight of some form once the House reconvenes after the summer recess, just before the election. I think that would probably be the most likely timing, and some poor unfortunates, probably those who have been paid £3,000 to accept a one-way ticket, having been rejected for asylum in this country, will probably be in the majority on that flight. And because to put anyone else on there would be to delay that flight even further through the courts, which almost certainly will end up being brought into solving this mess. Uh, somebody has pointed out quite clearly that it would actually cost less money to send someone to space than it is going to cost to send people to Rwanda. This is such a waste of money to make a political point. No deterrent, no extra deterrent is necessary. We already have deterrents. It's called law. And the laws exist. Somebody who is denied asylum is then an illegal migrant and should leave the country. The problem is we have a home office that is too lazy, too indolent, too stupid to actually do its work. And therefore, there's a backlog of people that it cannot process in any reasonable time. That is a disgrace. That is the disgrace, not the people coming across uh, into our country on small boats. That is a disgrace in itself, but they are not the disgrace. The disgrace is that we didn't set up something so that small boats would be unnecessary. In fact, Suella Braverman herself, when answering a question on the 22nd of November last year, or the year before, uh, to Tim Lawton, accepted that small boats were necessary to get into this country because there weren't enough safe and legal routes. And unless we provide safe and legal routes, number one, and number two, unless we provide some form of consular access outside the UK, ideally at the edge of the Mediterranean, ideally at the edge of France, so that people do not need to cross the Mediterranean, do not need to cross the Channel, uh, but can start their asylum process from somewhere near their own country. We can set a standard which other European countries will follow. Unless we do something like this, this problem is, some, is simply going to get worse and worse. It doesn't matter whether we uh, take a sort of King Canute position or take the position of Obelix and simply close our mouth and say we're going to stop breathing. Both are absurd, and the Rwanda plan is absurd, needs to be laughed out of the system, needs to be laughed out of Parliament. As it is, I think some form of the Rwanda plan is going to succeed, is, is, is going to go through, but it's going to leave the government with egg on its face. Victory for the government for now, but as Rachel Reeves points out, it's a 1979 moment, and it's a time when when we can see government changing, we can see a national change, and uh, all, all the talk about replacing Rishi Sunak. I'll, I'll do another video later about Penny Mordaunt's 
um, treasure, tre treasure trove of £26,000 uh, to campaign. Uh, this is money which has been steadily coming in since Rishi Sunak became Prime Minister. Uh, you know, the speculation isn't about whether or not he can be toppled, but whether or not she is party to this conspiracy to get rid of him, to get rid of a sitting Prime Minister. It's outrageous. And the, the real thing that the present government should have been concentrating on was making the version of Brexit which they've been given work because we have to deal with political reality whether we want Brexit or whether we don't want Brexit, Brexit has to work and the post-Brexit reforms um, controlled by people like Kemi Badenoch are mad, utter, utter, utterly mad red tape, costly and impractical but that sums up, that, that also sums up Rwanda doesn't it as well Red tape, costly and impractical.